Welcome to Think Out for Your Imagination. This podcast is about the imagination of me, Jennifer Purcell, and other neurodivergents and neurotypicals, and how our imagination is still vivid because we are neurodivergent, and about my imagination I used to have when I was little, and bringing it to life and sharing it with you. I hope that you enjoy this first episode and that you will be inspired to email me if you want to be interviewed about your imagination that you had when you were little. I will put my email in the podcast description for you. Okay, so today we are going to talk about cooking, and I want to begin by letting you know a little bit about my history with cooking. So I started cooking when I was eight years old, and my mom taught me how to cook. She's a really good cook. She cooks a lot of different things. She knows how to bake really good pies, and she likes to cook Italian and French, and she also likes to cook um, bread, um, like focaccia, which is an Italian bread, and she likes to make things with our homegrown vegetables from our garden that we have. And when I was in college, I got a lot better with cooking because I was living in the co-ops, which is a system of housing for low-income students. And even though I wasn't in the low-income portion for students, I lived there because I really liked the co-op system because you got to pitch in with the chores. So the chores were usually cooking, cleaning, gardening, or um, composting, <laughs> or helping with the delivery of the food. And I chose to do the cooking and the cleaning. So I started at assistant cook for 140 people at Cloyne for all the undergrads. And I worked my way up to, this was in my sophomore year, I worked my way up to dessert cook the next semester. And then the following year, in my junior year, I was um, I was co-head cook with one other person. And then we were making our own menus for 140 people, which can be challenging because you learn how to make dishes that are easy to make in mass quantities like pasta or salad or um, salsa or different kinds of sauces or stir fries. And we had to do it for different um, dietary restrictions like vegan, vegetarian, um, and for different algae restrictions, citrus free, dairy free, um, and nut free. So, and coin wasn't the only co-op I did it at. I also did it at hip where I boarded for food. Um, and I cooked there as an assistant cook. So I was helping with the cooking there too, but that was a smaller co-op. It was only 60 students and that was for grad students. So it was it was a good experience being able to help at both co-ops and knowing how to scale recipes. And one app that does help with scaling recipes really easily, if you don't want to have to do the math, is called Paprika, like the spice. That's how you spell it, Paprika. And it's so helpful because you can import re- your own recipes into it if you want to. And you can search for recipes in the app and then you can add them in there so you have a whole catalog of recipes. Kind of like creating a virtual cookbook on your phone or on your iPad, depending on where you have it or on your computer, you can have it on any of those devices. And then when you want to scale a recipe, they're up or down, it does it for you. So if you want to double it, it doubles all the ingredients for you. Although 
I'm not remembering if it doubles the time in like for the cooking or not. It might. Um, it's been a while since I've used the app, but it does double the ingredients for you, which is helpful. So, and the usually the cooking time is easier to figure out if you want to uh, be able to, you know, if you need to cook something longer, you can usually tell just by looking at it, um, you know, if it needs to be done more, depending on what it is. So, um, today's article, oh, actually, before I want to take a step back, before I go to today's article, I was going to say that with the citrus allergy at Cloyne, I mean, in any of the co-ops, that one was a little tricky because I had to Google the ingredients I was going to use to see if it had citrus, uh, citric acid in it. And that taught me a lot of things. I didn't know that dried cranberries or pears or strawberries had citric acid or have citric acid in them. So I had to make another salad or whatever dish I was going to use those ingredients in without those in them for the people who had citrus allergy, um, just to be safe. Because I didn't know, um, you never know how strong somebody's allergy is and you don't want to <laughs> make them um, get allergic reactions. So rather be safe than sorry, right? And that was the same with the nut allergy as well. Um, that one is probably easier to do than the citrus one because you just don't have the nuts in it, right? Um, and then the vegan one was pretty easy also, actually. You can do stir fries with tofu and veggies, and um, people really liked that. And um, if you have um, things like... Uh, Another thing you can do for somebody is uh, a dairy-free um, pasta, which um, can be done. Like you can do dairy-free mac and cheese if you know how to make the sauce not have dairy in it, which uh, like you could use um, a milk that doesn't have uh, dairy in it, like um, almond milk or silk. Um, and that will work perfectly for somebody who uh, is vegan. Um, and then um, that helps them so that they can have, I guess, that they can eat that uh, pasta. Um, and then, um, okay, so then the article today is from the NVLD project. And it is a good one because it talks about what Megan has learned in her 20s and it referenced cooking and it is titled 25 things I learned w with NBLD in my 20s by Megan and it was written in November of 2020. So here's a quote from the article. Learn to cook and try new recipes. We can all live on chicken sorry, we can't all live on chicken fingers. You might surprise yourself with your cooking abilities when you try new recipes. Eating well will also support your overall health and your future self will thank you for it, end quote. So I can relate to what Megan said because I wish I ate better in my early 20s. I'm doing better now than I was 19 through 23. As I said in episode 39 and 46, I've had challenges with overeating and controlling my emotions while also knowing how to express them in healthy ways. I have had to lose 40 pounds four times in my life, and the last time it stuck and is not coming back except for maybe when I have kids. <laughs> um, it is challenging to cook with NLD for me because 
of the fine motor skills, multitasking, math, and improvisation of recipes. The fine motor skills piece isn't as much of an issue as it used to be because I got better at chopping things with practice. But I'm not as good as a professional chef and don't need to be. It's kind of funny. I wanted to be a chef for a little while when I was a kid, but then I realized that I wanted to do other things than cooking. Multitasking is also easier because I've had to do many things with work that require doing multiple things at once. The math one got easier because of the app that I told you earlier called Paprika that my mom found. Like I said, it does the scaling for you, so you don't have to figure it out on your own. This made it a lot easier when I was cooking for 140 people or 60 people in the co-ops because like I was saying earlier, it scales the recipes up for you so you don't have to do that math in your head, which for me was would have been really hard to figure out because of NLD. Math is not easy for people who have NLD. As you would know from my episodes on that if you've listened to those. The improvising got easier too because I made more recipes that I wasn't familiar with at the co-ops and I learned how to cook with new ingredients. Like I learned how to make different kinds of cookies as a dessert cook. I learned how to cook enchiladas and stir fries as an assistant cook. As a co-head cook, I learned how to make my own menu for 140 people successively with different dishes for vegans, vegetarians, and people with citrus or nut allergies. And I've gotten better at the visual spatial part of putting leftovers away in containers because I've gotten better at approximating what size container to use. This is not easy, but it's a good skill to have and I think it got easier because of watching my mom do it for many years. And I do want to talk briefly about one cooking experience that I had that was negative. Um, I'm not going to mention who it was with because I don't want to, um, I'm not doing this for veggies. I'm just doing it to help people learn from mistakes that they might make in life as I always do on the podcast. So I was in New York for right after the summer I graduated from high school, which was in 2018. And I was at the summer camp that helps the tri-state areas of New York. And I believe Connecticut is in there as well. And some other states might be in there also. Um, but New York is where's where, where the camp was uh, designated and it was a summer camp and it's probably not running anymore because of COVID but I was there before COVID and my part that I was doing was the cooking part that the summer camp had and so basically I was helping the kids that got to go there because they were picked by a social worker at their school to go there to be able to help learn something new that they could bring back to their family and help their family at home. And I was helping with the cooking piece. And all of these kids that we were helping are African American or they are in low income family. Um, I mean, both actually. So I felt very good by helping them because of that. And um, the part that didn't go so well is whenever I tried to make suggestions to my boss, she um, tried to micromanage too much. And she never took my suggestions. Um, she always shot them down. And she thought she knew what she was doing, which... She did, but she never, she never um, took my suggestions with any consideration 
and she um, just decided to say, no, I'm going to do it my way, my ways, my way or the highway, basically, is the way, the way she, um, her mindset was. And that's a very fixed mindset. She did not have a growth mindset. A growth mindset is where you are willing to learn new things and willing to accept and realize that there is another way that might be better than yours and willing to learn new things. And I've been willing to learn new things and over the past year with this podcast <laughs> and I've been learning to change the podcast like I was willing to go back and redo all my solos that I did in the first year of this podcast so that I made them longer and I added new material to them with the research and I made them better with doing that. And I tried to slow down my speaking speed and my reading speed with the scripts as well so that not only people with NLD but other people, neurotypicals, could understand me better when they were listening to the podcast. And I started using a microphone on them so that you could hear me better. I did all those things because I realized that I wanted to have a better quality of a podcast for my audience. And I realized there was a better way of doing it than I was doing it in the past. Yes, it was extra work because then I had to do two podcasts each Friday, an old one and a new one, old one because I was doing an old topic and a new one because I was doing a new topic, but it was worth it because eventually I, once I was done with all the old topics, I just had to do the new topics. And now that when I look back on it, of course I would do that again because I realized that having growth mindset is really a good thing to have better than a fixed mindset where you're more thinking that your way is the better way and maybe the only way and that you're not willing to adopt other ways of doing whatever you're doing, whether that's podcasting or cooking or financial business or, um, maybe social media or um, marketing or whatever it is. Those are just some examples that could have fixed mindset. I mean, growth mindset and fixed mindset can exist anywhere in the world. Um, but in this case with cooking, my boss, like I was saying, she was very fixed in what she was doing and she was not willing to be open or be more um, free, more growing with her ideas and with her mindset of, oh, maybe Jennifer, me, has a better way of doing this than I do currently. Let me see what her way is. Let me try it. And if it's not better, then I don't have to do it. That's all I was asking her to do and consider. But would she do it? No. And so eventually what I realized was in my head, I didn't tell her this, but I was like, okay, I know what you're doing. And I know why you're doing it because you've done this program for more years than I have. I think she was probably there for at least 15 years. I don't remember how many. But um, I realized I was going to stop making suggestions and just do what she told me to do, which got very boring because I was wanting to help her make the program better and she wasn't willing to make it be new and different. And... Um, she was just wanting to stick it with it the way it was. She wasn't willing to have a growth mindset. She was just being fixed. And I'm not surprised if she's had that happen before. 
with somebody who might have had a lot of cooking experience like I did and trying to help her who she has a lot of experience too and maybe more in different areas than I do but she just wasn't willing to um, have me help her and that just wasn't very good on the receiving end so if you're in a situation like that and it doesn't matter if it's with cooking it can be with anything where the person isn't willing to accept your consideration and your help and um just try to excuse me take a step back and in your mind and be like okay well they're not willing to accept my help just be willing to breathe in the moment and see what they're doing and notice what they're doing and if they have a fixed mindset which this person did then realize okay i'm not going to try to change them to their growth mindset of being more open and being more considering and because they gotta go there on their own and be able to make that change so you can try to push somebody but that's not always going to work um it worked for me because i was willing to take the steps with the podcast because i did the research on how to do it not everybody's willing to do the research and being able to see how can i make these changes in my life or in this area so that i can make this product podcasting cooking whatever it is better than the way it is right now and so that was an example for you there so as i wrap up this episode i would like to let you know that i'm proud of being able to cook even though i have challenges with it still of you know being able to work around with the math and um with the cooking as well and got better with the pieces i mentioned to you earlier with the visual spatial the multitasking and the math and the fine motor skills and i know that some of those areas might still be challenging for people out there who have nld or have another learning challenge and i would like to hear from my audience if you have an LD or if you have another learning challenge if you have challenges in those areas with the fine motor skills the visual spatial the math and the multitasking and the improvising of cooking to just see you know how you uh either try to do work around with those areas and how you uh, deal with it um, and um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will talk to you next Friday I hope that this week's episode of think out for your imagination brought new ideas to your mind and reminded you of when you were little and would imagine and pretend and play with your friends or yourself and create games in your mind and you know just be just be a kid and have fun and you know what it's like to dream it and do that and be able to um, be a little kid again and you know believe in things like fairy tales and mermaids and um, wonderful creatures. I will talk to you next Thursday.